Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a good video for you today. It's about the RICO Act and what is going on with all these rappers getting charged with RICO. It's driving me crazy. It got me so crazy, I did the deep dive. I got back into the law because that's what I did for 10 years in the federal system. In fact, before I start this video, check out Book Out, Gangster Redemption. Chapter 12, chap chapter 12 has me talking about the law and Abu Ghraib and comparing a prison to a prison overseas. That's how bad it was. Check out Cigar Out right now. I love it. Crooked Diamond Cigar. Check it out. We're having a good time. Check us out on YouTube member programs. If you have not liked, have not subscribed, please do. Hit that notification button and we're going to jump right into the RICO Act. And at the end of the video, I'm going to let you know a little history of who the first person ever was convicted under the RICO Act and what mafia figures were convicted as well. Let's continue. First of all, I'm going to get into the RICO Act because studying the law, I know a lot about the RICO Act and I even went deeper dive today. There's two things I'm going to discuss today. All the rappers being charged with RICO, what the RICO is, and what the conspiracy law is as well. Because I feel the government is really getting a little bit crazy with the RICO because it was intended in 1970. The RICO Act came out in 1970. It was passed by Congress, the 91st Congress. And what they did was they really, the intent of the law was to curb organized crime and big criminal enterprises. What was happening is they can't get the bosses, the boss of the crime families and big organizations because they never had their hands. They didn't, weren't the guy pulling the gun. They weren't the guy uh, actually making the phone call or going into the bank. But they were reaping the rewards of it. And that is what the RICO Act is about. We're going to get into the RICO Act right now. The Racketeering Influenced Corruption Organization, RICO. That's the act, acronym for that act. It is under 18 U.S.C. 1961. That's just the U.S. codes that guys like myself would go into the criminal procedure books and we would look at that law and read every word in that law and then see how that a law applies to the crime you are charged with. They have to do that, the, the criminal procedures. And at all places have them, everybody has them, defense attorneys, prosecutors, everybody. So that's very important. The Racketeering Influence Corruption Organization Act is the United States federal law that provides for extended criminal penalties and a civil cause of action for acts performed as part of an ongoing criminal organization. Hear what I just said, ongoing. Once my case, even though I was charged under the RICO Act, once my case was done, it's over. There was no, no more ongoing criminal organization. Here's the violation. To violate the RICO, a person must engage in a pattern of racketeering activity. Now, the racketeering activity we're going to get into in a minute, and this has to be connected to an enterprise. The enterprise is the family if it's, if it's a mob family. It's a gang if it's, it's a, uh, these, these rappers and stuff. But I'm going to get into that because I think they're getting uh, charged wrongly on that. Uh, the law defy, defines 35 offenses as constituting racketeering, including gambling, murder, kidnapping, arson, drug dealing bribery, a bunch of others, significantly mail fraud and wire fraud are included on the list. And I'll tell you why they did that. And we're going to get into that one here in a minute. So then the benefits for the government. Advantage of the RICO charge. As stated, a huge advantage of the RICO Act is that it allows the federal prosecutors to indict multiple members of a criminal organization for crimes even in situations where they didn't commit the crime themselves. Here's where I have a big, big issue with the young people and the gangs being charged with it. We're going to get into who is being charged with RICO. A lot of young people get into gangs. Why? They get into gangs for a sense of family. They might not have a family. They might have been grow, grow up in a gang because their older brother or, their, or somebody in the gang. Now, that, does that mean they're reaping the rewards? No. Does that mean they are in the gang? Are they committing other offenses? If they're not committing offense and they're getting everybody in this organization under the RICO Act, I have a hard time with that. 
especially with young people and especially with the young organized crime they're charging these young people with. You're talking about 18-year-old people with a RICO. Where is their organization of skills? They didn't even graduate high school. And now they, and you want them to have organizational skills. Now the laws. Part of the Organized Crime Control Act of 1970, which is the RICO, the Racketeering Influence and Corruption Organization Act, makes it unlawful to acquire, operate, or receive income from an enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity. Are the leaders of these gangs really getting all the money and reaping the rewards of that? I, I don't buy that either. This is not an up. When I was in organized crime, we had to pay up, and we called it tribute. You paid up, whether it's a percentage. I used to pay 10% of a robbery up to my bosses, and they would pass it up and up. That's reaping the rewards if you're at the top. I don't see these 18-year-old gang members or rappers that are getting so-called gang members. And are they gang members? I don't even know if they qualified them as gang members yet. And what is a gang member? Is the government a gang? Is the police organizations a gang? I mean, think about it. Think of the definition of gang. And the cons. A major general criticism of the RICO Act is that it, 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 its interpretation and application is problematic and subject to abuse by prosecutors. You know, haven't we given the government enough to go after you? Listen, if you commit a murder, if you commit a robbery, if you commit uh, uh, some kind of offense, drug dealing, charge him with that. Convict him of that. Put him in jail on that. Don't start throwing other stuff to make your job easier as a prosecutor. Oh, we got three witnesses say he's part of this gang. That, 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 that's hard for me to, to, to wrap my head around. And I don't like it. Here is what's important and what I think they really are after. RICO rules of procedure allow the government to freeze the assets of the defendant prior to the case even going to trial. The reasoning behind this was that making the government wait until the guilty verdict was entered would allow time for these assets to be well hidden. Well, they're either well hidden or not. Why are we taking assets away from somebody who could use it for a criminal defense? You know, a big problem I have with the, with, with the government is they have all the money in the world and all the investigators and all the resources in the world. So with that, I think the, the defense, even if it's a public defender, the public defender, in my, my view, should have the same exact resources that the prosecutor has to defend a case. Because right now you have unevil. You know, there's a thing called the scales, the scales of justice. And that's what you see in law. You'll see it in the Supreme Court everywhere. There's scales. And it's supposed to be weighing the rights in the government. And it's supposed to be in balance. Right now it's way out of balance. The government has all everything. And people of color, people of, of lesser means can't. They, they can't fight the government. And, and that's wrong, because now you're really putting them behind an eight ball. And what do you do? You come up to them, you tell them you're going to face a life in prison, you're going to make them rat. And I say make them rat because they've made the laws to the point where you can't defend yourself. Obviously, I defended myself, and a lot of people can't do that. And, and, and I just think it's wrong. So let's understand the RICO in a little bit of a deeper way. Organized crime groups may operate illegal businesses known as rackets. An organization group may also di divert funds from an illegal business to use for illegal activities. Rackets primarily function in obviously illegal industries, such as prostitution, human trafficking, drug trafficking, illegal weapons trade, or counterfeiting. Now, racketeering can take many forms, including cyber extortion, protection rackets, kidnapping, fencing rackets, drug trafficking, illegal gambling act. That's just to name a few. Under the RICO Act, there's murder, robbery, extortion, uh, even wire fraud, mail fraud, but you need predicated acts. What does a predicated act mean? You have to have two predicated acts. That means acts that were done in furtherance of this organization besides the one you did. It's called predicated acts. 
Now, how is the government really to prove that? That's where it gets a little bit dicey for them. And I think they could lose some of these cases. Again, here's the problem. Do the defendants have the money? That I don't know. I'm just going to give you a few pointers on how to fight the RICO. And then I'm going to get into some rappers and what my opinion on their RICO charge is. How's that? First of all, to fight the RICO Act. No enterprise existed. You got to first prove the organization was there. It's been an organization. How you prove that organization is there means a lot. It's a gang. Well, you know, in California, every street has its own gang. Gang. Is that an organized uh, uh, enterprise? When you have enterprise, you got to look at the word enterprise and then go from there. So you have to prove it's an enterprise, meaning they're making money. This is, this is made to make money. That's what it is. The second, the alleged enterprise did not affect interstate commerce. You know, people ask me what, what, what my main charge under the RICO Act was. Mine was Hobbs Act robbery. Hobbs Act means interfering with interstate commerce. Plain and simple, you could rob a McDonald's. It's not a federal bank. You'd wonder why that could be federal. Because McDonald's gets its potatoes from Idaho, and you're now interfering with interstate commerce. It's just a way for the federal government to get in there. But they have to prove that in front of a jury. So that could be a little bit harder. Are they really, are these rappers really interfering with interstate commerce? That's dicey. Three, the defendant did not associate with the alleged enterprise. Now you have to say to yourself, was he a hanger on? Was he just coming around partying with the guys? Was he just part of that neighborhood? I don't know. Number four, the defendant did not engage in a pattern of racketeering activity. If he's just part of this group and he didn't rob somebody, he didn't do anything, they got to prove he did some part of a crime. And finally, the hardest one to prove. The defendant did not conduct or participate in the enterprise through that pattern of racketeering activity, committing at least two of the racketeering acts in the indictment. Here's what I mean by that. Yeah, I'm part of a group of guys. I robbed something. How, what does that have to do with me? Am I giving money up? Am I pushing money up? Are they proving that I put money up? That's the case. So that's how you fight it. Now, this is very important. We are going to get into something that I like, and that is two things. One, the conspiracy law. Boy, do I hate it. The conspiracy law states that if you and your friend plan a bank robbery, you say, okay, let's rob this bank tomorrow. You end up saying, you know what? I don't want to do that. I'm not going to rob a bank. But you don't go to the police and he robs the bank the next day? You are in on a conspiracy. You are in on a conspiracy and you will be charged as such. And that's wrong. The guy did not want to do it. He had no overt act. He had planned it. Yes, he was part of that. But he did not have an overt. He didn't go into the bank. He didn't drive the getaway car. He didn't steal the car. So he's not involved. Just because they talked about it, they were drinking and getting stoned and doing Now, let's get into the fun part of this video. This is the rappers that I am just shocked that are being charged with Rico. Now, I've had some people in my office and in our law area where we're talking right now say to me, well, it does sound like a, a, a Rico act, you know, what they're charged with. Well, remember something. I read you those five things. I don't think one of those rappers have all of those five. I don't. And I'm going to look and I'll show you what I mean. We're going to go from the oldest to the newest. Takashi 6 9 Associate Street Gang, which was the 9 Trey. Now, he was charged with Rico. He ended up flipping. And he flipped for a lot of reasons. I, I did a little research and had some of the guys in the office tell me what exactly happened. His own gang beat him up for his money and, and everything. And... Uh, I guess this guy said, fuck it. These guys are ratting on me. I get that part of it. I really do. I, I used to be very, very against ratting. Uh, I still am. Uh, but I, there's a part of me that doesn't hate it as much as I did when I was younger. Uh, I didn't rat. And I will never rat. So, and it has nothing to do with the people I protected. It has everything to do with my own word. My word has to mean something to me. And that's all I'm talking about. Now, does this Takashi 6 9 does he think he has a... Would you go into business with him? No. But 
Should have he been charged with a RICO? No. This man wasn't in further of an enterprise. This guy was part of the... They were beating him up. This guy couldn't have been uh, charged then. Just because there's a murder, you don't have to charge a RICO. Charge him with murder. That's what's driving me nuts. Next one up. This man, New Jersey native and five other individuals accused of being part of a large-scale drug distribution ring. Fetty Rap. It's Fetty Wap. There you go. Fetty Wap. You heard it right here from my producer. Fetty Wap. He was released from jail on a $500,000 secured bond in November 2021. He was subsequently required to wear an ankle monitor and was subject to drug screening while waiting trial. That happens a lot. Uh, when you get a bond, uh, there's only two reasons you don't get bond. One is you are a flight risk, and they can, they can nullify that. They take your passport. They put you on a monitor. Or you're a threat to the community. That's what mine was. Uh, and... Is this man a threat to you? Obviously, they put him on a monitor. There's ways around that as well. However, 10 months after his conditional release, Fetty was once again arrested when he allegedly threatened to kill someone during a FaceTime call. That kind of makes me like, what do you mean? I mean, yo, man, I'm going to kill you when I get out of here. I threatened a lawyer like that. I, I just, I think they, they want to get you. They want to put their foot on your neck, the government. And it's tough. I often tell a lot of people two things. When you get arrested and you know you're guilty, you know you're going to do time, stay in jail. Unless there's a reason to be out. In your defense, maybe get rid of property, maybe do certain good things with, with, with family or something of that nature. Obviously, then you would want to be out. There's another thing I heard about a case we're going to talk about. Next one, December 2020, Casanova. Casanova wanted a connection to an 18-person RICO indictment of New York untouchable Gorilla Stone Nation gang. Wow, New York is hot on this RICO. I, I think they just got nothing to do. That's what I really do. I think that's what's going on with, the, with them. It's crazy, but that's what they're doing. Casanova pled guilty to racketeering and narcotics offenses as leader of the Gorilla Stone. Ultimately, the Brooklyn rapper admitted to a series of crimes that were committed by a gang under his leadership. Casanova also pled guilty to conspiracy and participating in the affairs of a criminal enterprise, as well as conspiring to distribute over 100 kilograms of marijuana. Uh, marijuana, who gives a shit? Number one. Number two, he pled guilty to that. Because he pled guilty, people say, well, then he's guilty of that right. No. A lot of times they, they're so heavy on you that if you went to trial and lost multiple life sentences, obviously he took a plea. So he's getting out of prison, and that's important. The next one, one I've done a video on, Young Doug, May, 20, May 9th, 2022, Atlanta, Georgia. And he was indicted under the state of Georgia RICO Act, different than the feds. So with that, uh, I'm not going to get into the state charge. It's the same kind of charge, but a little bit different. And that is an ongoing case, and we are still waiting on the decisions on that and the trial dates and stuff. And last, for rappers, K Flock, just a day ago, February, well, February 23rd, the Bronx native and seven other reporters associates were accused of being leaders of the New York Sebside DOA gang. Currently in jail, awaiting trial for the murder in connection with the 2021 shooting death of Oscar Hernandez. It was out front of, of a, a barber shop, but K Flock lawyer says he was not the shooter. Uh, charge him with that. Don't charge him with this uh, Rico. I think it's just another uh, bullshit thing. I really think it's crazy what they're doing with these young guys. And uh, in his case, I heard what a reporter talked about, how he waived his bond hearing. Should never do that. You can, you can weed out information from a prosecutor. That's a little tip. Always go to bond hearings. Don't waive your bond, whether you're going to get it or not because you can get information they have. Now, another person I think is going to be charged with RICO. I know, this is going to be crazy. I think Tate's going to be charged with RICO. Andrew Tate. I think he's going to be charged with RICO. He's going to get out of Romania jail, because he deserves to. And I think, and I've been following it now. In the beginning, I wasn't as much. Now I am. And I think he's going to get, I, I think, if they want you, they're going to get you. 
and I hope they don't, and I really do, but I think he's ripe for a Rico because he had an organization. He, uh, with the, the, the sex girls talking or whatever it is, uh, they were kicking up money to him. Obviously, they were working for him. I don't, unless they think his organization was corrupt, and that's where I think there's a little bit of a, a sketchy thing. Now I want to give you a little bit of information. And I, I said I'd do this in the beginning of the video, and I'm doing it now. Give you a little history. Not a history, history. The first ever RICO trial was conducted in May of 1979. A lot of people are going to wonder what was that. United States versus Sam Bailey Gang by Prosecutor Mark Weeb in San Francisco, California, Northern District of California. The case was tried successfully by the use of the RICO statute in alleging that the gang of postal burglars and a Nevada fence collaborated cr criminally in an organized crime fashion. The case did not involve mafia crime families. Now, as for the mafia, and everyone talks about that in the case, subsequently, the RICO Act was first used by the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York in September 1979 in United States versus Scotto. Scotto was convicted on charges of racketeering, accepting unlawful labor payments, and income tax evasion. He, did the, he headed the International Longshoremen's Association. And during the 1980s and 90s, federal prosecutors used the law to bring charges against several mafia figures. The best known RICO case ever was the Mafia Commission trials where they arrested the, the heads of the five families in New York and they ended up convicting them all. And uh, that was our favorite prosecutor, Rudy Giuliani. Not my favorite. But that is the case. I hope you understood now the federal law. I hope you understand the RICO a little bit better. Don't judge people right away because I think the federal government is using the RICO too much. Because let's face it, there's a lot of organized crimes. Are these police part of an organized crime? These cops, that five cops that beat that guy, are they part of an organization? They give dues to a union. They're kicking up part of a criminal organization. Is Are they? I don't know. I'm, I'm not an anti-cop. You know that. I'm up for a positive cops. But with that said, I want you to make good choices. I don't want you to get in front of a, a cops. I don't want you to be in front of a jury or, or a judge. Make good choices. Have a good day, everybody. And please stay safe.